Good morning, judges. We are ReEdu, and we are here to give refugees a new start in learning. My name is Minghan, and I'll be the CEO of ReEdu. I am Bilal, the Chief Financial Officer. I'm Gerard, the Chief Marketing Officer. I am Matthew, and I'm the Head of Product. And I'm Benjamin, the Head of Business Development. So, we believe that children are the future of a society. But the main problem that's happening right now is that there are 26 million refugees out there, half of them being children. And in Malaysia, only 30% under the age of 18 receive education in school centers. In Malaysia, 14% of refugee children are enrolled in preschool education, while only 44% of refugee children aged 6 to 13 are enrolled in primary education. And 16, and only 16% of refugee children aged 14 to 17 are enrolled in secondary education. The sustainable development goals that we want to solve are improving the quality of education for refugees, as well as reducing the inequalities allowing refugees to learn real life skills. By doing so, we're also reducing poverty as refugees will get more job opportunities. So the, so the main idea of our company is to aid refugees who do not have good quality education. But instead of teaching them subjects such as math, science, or English, we will be providing them with the opportunity to learn new skills such as entrepreneurship, public speaking, or even pick up a new sport or musical instrument. So we plan to introduce these skills by bringing in people such as students and teachers who show talent in these areas and are willing to invest some of their time into teaching refugee children these important soft skills. We will be organizing workshops to teach refugee children these skills and working with companies and other schools to we'll be working with these schools and companies to create custom months long programs where they can have the opportunity to contribute towards helping refugee children de develop these soft skills. In addition to donations for specific items like old musical instruments and sports equipment, we will also be charging schools and companies to organize the events. This will be our main source of revenue. So some of the stakeholders that would be part of this project would be students from refugee schools and international schools. We'll also be looking at employees from MNCs as possible stakeholders too. We are currently looking for refugee schools all over Klang Valley, as that's where we're planning to start. But over time, we'll expand into more of Malaysia. So what exactly makes us different? We'll be providing skill building opportunities and a platform for refugee youth to showcase their talents, as well as providing a platform to allow students and employers to become mentors and forge long-term connections with refugee students. We will also connect the different stakeholders, organize end-to-end -end programs, making it easier for everyone involved. Our first step is to identify nearby refugee schools and build up connections with them. And once we've done that, we plan to build a pilot program for HI students to come and teach refugee on valuable soft skills like communication. Once we've achieved that, we'll scale up the project by trying to identify other organizations uh, for sponsorships and events. So the resources required to help us with this program will be any relevant equipment such as sports items, musical instruments, or art supplies which can be obtained through donations. We may also need transportation options to help send these refugee children to their destination location or to help, those, uh, to help send those people who will be helping these uh, refugee children. But most importantly, we will need both connections from educational institutions for refugees as well as connections with companies and schools. Feel free to con... Yeah. At the end of the day, refugees are you and I with different circumstances. So feel free to contact us in any one of the social media platforms listed below. Thank you. Well done. Very confident. Very, uh, and you are perfectly on time, actually. That's bang on four minutes. I'm very impressed. Thank uh, you. Really good timekeeping. So uh, let's start with some questions from our judges. Devi, would you like to go first? Sure. Thanks, guys, for this. I really like this. I think uh, just a few comments. Your presentation was very clear. It was very crisp. It was to the point. Uh, no fluff. I really like the way that you guys uh, presented. Uh, so well done on that. Um, I love the idea. I think it's very necessary. Uh, I have a few uh, thoughts to share. Um, so one is there are a lot of education companies that are for profit building a lot of great content. Is there a way you can partner with them to use some of that content to um, help refugees? That's just a thought. Um, the second thought I have is actually Pavan is working with a student of ours 
uh, William who is doing the same thing or something similar for Indonesia, uh, Indonesian refugees and people that live in, you know, Kampung, etc. It might be worthwhile for you to connect with him and see what his strategy was to approach um, schools, to approach different populations, because I think he, he learned a lot uh, on the way. So I think uh, we can connect you to him if you'd like. He's in grade 11. Um, one question I have is, uh, how did you guys um, come up with this idea specifically targeting refugees? Was it something you guys, it came up via conversation? Was it, how did you guys, you know, get inspired by this idea? So I think we were like researching on uh, what target market that we wanted to have and we found refugees to be somewhat challenging and somewhat of target market that we actually want to help. Because in the end of the day, refugees come to Malaysia or come to different countries to look for a better life. So we want to provide that better life for them. And how we can actually do that is to actually write skills because most of the time there's already education centers out there and they teach English, math or science and I don't think we are qualified enough to do that but what we can do is actually provide public speaking services, entrepreneurship, yeah. sports skills, those kind of things and we would like to partner with you guys uh, such as Mr Adam Chan who has already experienced with working with refugees or a said now who can teach these students how to basically develop their entrepreneurship skills, which in turn develops their teamwork skills, multiple skills. So that is what we want to accomplish. No, I, I think it's I think it's a great idea, guys. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Adam, go ahead, please. Yeah. Hey, thanks guys. I think I think you know it's fantastic. It's it's something that I, I hold dear to my my heart as well. And and you know, we've been doing this uh, for quite a couple of years and and it's great to see you guys, you know, uh, having this interest because I can then pass the, the baton off to you guys to, to, to take over the project for me and then to grow it. I think one of a few, a few comments that I have, what you're saying is absolutely true. Forget about teaching them science and whatever it is. What they need is really a skill set because at the end of the day, some of these kids, I mean, there are quite a few who are academically brilliant, all right, uh, but you know, most of them, once they get um, uh, sent to another country and, and settled in other countries, what's important is the skill. So whether it is, you know, uh, carpentry, plumbing, you know, those kinds of things, it, it's something that they can earn an income from. And I think that, that's most important. So the skill is actually uh, topmost in, 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 in what they want. Um, but it, what I found is that in Malaysia, there are many, many groups of people who have the same idea. They want to help refugees. And UNHCR uh, tries to, to link everybody. What I would suggest you do is to see how you can, instead of doing it by yourself, create a larger platform. You know, you have Fuji's, uh, Fuji, which is set up by former Miss Malaysia. You have the Hong Leong group. Who have their own refugee foundation, uh, and then you have us, and then so, so I've always been telling people, forget about trying to set up your own thing. Try and you know be part of a larger and have a bigger impact. Um, my question though is, if you were to go by yourself, how would you? Getting donations is one thing, but you know it it will burn out, and, and that's what we found early on. Yeah, people will just donate a little bit, but then it, it dies off. How are you going to sustain this? Uh, uh, you know, three years from now, five years from now, when you, you, you when the donors suddenly stop giving you money or, or the school stops supporting you. Okay, uh, like we mentioned in our speech, we're actually looking for donations for material, like sports equipment, maybe an old football boot or something like that. And those things, once, uh, those things don't really, like, you don't really need to keep it because unlike money, money is not um, used all the time. And for example, like old stuff, or fo old football or old piano can actually be, do be donated anytime. So and, and used for long periods of time. Uh, as well as the volunteers themselves, um, they can, they are, every year there are new, new, more and more people who want to have um, community service uh, requirements or students who go up another level and have uh, programs that require them to do community service. So hopefully the, the amount of volunteers themselves who don't really need um, much equipment, for example, public speaking or entrepreneurship is their own um, 
their own knowledge from their brain and uh, hopefully the, the amount of volunteers would, wouldn't dry up as much as the money itself. Okay, but uh, this is something that I, I've, I've wanted to do earlier on, but I think you know you guys can start doing this. Talk to, talk to the senior leadership team and see how you can use the campus as a, 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 a platform to bring the refugees in. For example, your, 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 your kitchens, can you use that to teach the refugees how to you know, bake cakes so that they can sell and pastries and, and, and sell them so that they earn an income. You know, you've got the sports facilities, you have, you have a lot of facilities in the school. Can you use that uh, for your program? Yeah, definitely. Like we have um, many old basketballs in our school or, or old tennis or badminton rackets that are probably going to be replaced every few years or so. Or uh, some of that can be still used for refugees for donated to refugees and uh, also the uh, sports facilities we can bring them in on a week week ends when there are no like none of our students are using it and hopefully we can share them with the refugees good ideas going around folks i'm we're going to pop the poll up uh for the rest but john uh just while they do that and while i direct the judges to uh their score sheets do you have any comments or questions john yeah, just uh, maybe a quick comment or so. I mean, you know, as Adam and Debbie have said, I mean, this is a great idea. And I think every country actually, you know, would benefit from it. And everybody, every country, unfortunately, has a similar situation. <clears throat> but with that said, um, do you, does the city or the government help in any way? I mean, I know in the U.S. they do have a lot of programs that refugees, you know, refugees can, you know, sign up for to get, you know, incentives or assistance. It's a matter. Just wondering, you know, how that goes, you know, how that works in Malaysia. Um, and the second part would be, do you anticipate, let's say, what percentage of the refugees, you know, may be interested in that? You know, will you be able to handle the amount of individuals that may, you know, show up? You know, did you? Take that into consideration um well the second part of the questions well what we are doing is teaching skills rather than education learning so we think that uh, teaching the refugee skills like playing a musical instrument or uh, teaching them a sport is much more interesting than them learning a new subject like english or mathematics so hopefully the interest in the in learning a new skill would would drive up participation more than any other education-based learning. The first question, to answer the first question uh, about governments who are supporting, I think, I don't, I'm not sure whether governments actually support developing skills for refugees. Instead, I think they focus more on developing uh, education such as English, math or science. And obviously, some of them are not able to compete with international students as they don't have the proper place to make a test or they don't have consistent teaching schedules which is what we are privileged to have. So providing skills to give them an advantage, to boost the advantage in the current society is what I feel is needed. Okay, great. <clears throat> Fantastic. Thank you, Re Edu. Really appreciate what you're doing here and uh, the idea that you've got up um, and for your obviously very confident presentation as well. So thank you, lads, and uh, wish you the best of luck.